Hey YouTube, what is up? Welcome back. I greatly appreciate you coming back and watching my videos. I recently purchased this Toro 421 uh, snow thrower. It is an older model. It's a 1980s model. I picked it off of Facebook Marketplace for 75 bucks. And I thought even if I've got to put a few dollars into it for $75, it is going to be uh, worth the price. When I bought it, from the gentleman. He said that there is gas leaking about where the shutoff valve is coming from the gas tank. So I've already purchased a shutoff valve for it, some new hose. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the spark plug. I'm gonna change out the oil. There's going to need to be replaced the skids and the scraper bar as well. So just some general maintenance is what I'm going to do in this video and then see if there's any other issues that we need to address before the winter season pops up. So stay tuned. So the first thing I want to do before starting is to make sure that there's plenty of oil to at least start it. Now it looks like there's a little bit of staining here, but that's okay. I can see where the serrated areas are. So we'll push that back down there. And it looks like it needs some oil, but that's okay. I'm gonna drain it and I'm going to replace it anyway. But there is enough oil in there to at least start the motor up. So with having checked the oil, we now want to check the compression. And we're gonna do that by removing the spark plug. Spark plug doesn't look too awful bad. There's, there's some carbon buildup on it, but uh, we're replacing that anyway, so I'm not too concerned. So let's check the compression. Put this guy in here. And then we will want to turn the motor over. by pulling on our handle. And we'll do this a couple times. And you can see where the compression is sitting about 90. There is a slow leak, but I don't know if that leak is due to my setup here or compression overall with the rings, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be my compression test setup here. So over 90 PSI, that's going to be good. Now let's go ahead and replace the spark plug and see if we can't get it to turn over. One of the first things I noticed was this was the spark plug that came out. This is my new one and they are two different. This is actually what the manual calls for. This is what came with it, so I don't know if he was just trying to figure out something to put in there so he had a spark plug or not, but we're going to put the proper one in and we'll go from there. So to see if the mower is going to turn over, we're going to go ahead and use some starting fluid because like I said, we can't put any gas into the gas tank because it'll just leak out. So we'll put a little starting fluid into the head, put our spark plug on, and let's give it a couple of pulls. We saw that it started up. It might have only been for a couple of seconds, but that's all we needed to know to make sure that it is going to run. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the oil out of it. That way I can tip it up, move it over, lay it over, whatever, and not have to worry about any fluids coming out of it. 
I'm going to go ahead and replace the fuel line and the shutoff valve that the seller said was leaking on it. I'm also going to replace the skids and the scraper bar on it. And I think also with the transfer case, because it is a two stage, I'm going to replace the oil that's in there as well. So let's go ahead and get draining that oil. So to drain the oil, we need to remove this tire because the oil drain is sitting right here. And if I, if I just don't put it up and drain it out, it's going to make a mess and I would rather not. So we first take the tire off, then we get tilt the, the uh, motor a little bit and then have it drain into a bucket. So with that, we just remove our little pin here and then remove our tire. That doesn't always come off the easiest. And whenever we put this back together, we'll put a little lithium grease in here and on, on that shaft just to kind of knock down some of the, the friction from the rust that's built up. So on this guy, we're just going to push this off. And you can see that that oil really, really, really needed to be changed. So that'll work out. And we'll give that some time to, to drain. Okay, now that that is down to a drip, we'll just put this cap back on. And we'll snug it up so that it is ready to go whenever we're ready to fill. So I've tilted the snow thrower on its face so I can access the fuel line and shutoff valve underneath the uh, gas tank. So we're going to remove this clamp here, which should allow us to take this hose off. And then instead of finishing removing this, I'm going to go to the other side and disconnect it from the carburetor. And so that hose runs through and it comes right here and it meets up with the carburetor in the back of that. So what we need to do is remove our carburetor heater box and to do that we'll first need to remove this screw up here that is connecting that white wire. Then, because the control rod for the thrower itself won't give us very much clearance, we need to remove the screw that does that, or the nut that does that. And that comes right off. Now we need to remove the choke knob and the screw that holds the heater box on. And now that gives us plenty of access to the hose that we need to remove. So with that hose free, we should be able to pull it directly through. And there's our hose with our shutoff valve. And you can feel that shutoff valve is messed up. So we'll just go ahead and replace all of that. And we'll be back in business for that. So there is a very good access to just try to slide the new hose underneath the uh, the, the shroud here. So we need to go ahead and take this shroud off.
there are two more bolts that we need to take off. There's one here and then there's one on the other side of it. But to get access to that bolt, we need to remove this one here. We're going to tip the mower back up so that we can now remove the shroud assembly. Being careful not to pinch or tear any hoses. Now I remove the primer bulb hose here. I think I'm going to go ahead and replace it while I've got it torn down like this. So what we need to do is take our hose and thread it through that hole right there and then it'll make it to the other side and then we'll connect it up to our carburetor. So I've pulled the hose through to the other side. I'm ready to connect it onto the nipple of that carburetor. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and put that primer hose back on and we'll put the shroud back on and we should be good on this side. Here's the old primer hose and you can see where it's been, had some bad cracking. So I'm going to replace it with this new one and we're just going to slide it right onto that nipple and now it's ready to connect to the primer that was on the engine cover. Here's the primer bulb on that cover. You can see there's some corrosion or some crud or something funky going on there. And whenever you press on it, it doesn't, it doesn't hold right. So when I found a I found a new primer bulb, and when you press on the bulb part, air should go through, you cover it, it should be you know, blocked so that you know that you're getting good um, vacuum or even just good pressure where on this one whenever you push you don't you don't get any sort of pressure buildup. So I'm going to replace that primer bulb. So now we connect our primer bulb to our primer line on the back. And now we can put our cover back onto the motor. Before I finish buttoning this all up, I want to go ahead and take a real quick look at that carburetor to find out if there's any, any issues going on, at least in the bowl, that I need to be aware of. And that's not a good sign there. You can see all the deposits that are on there. And it looks like there's it's pretty bad garbage in the in that cup. Let's take a look at that O-ring. Uh-oh. Got a problem with that O-ring. 
So I think I'm gonna stop here and I'm going to go ahead and order a carburetor and replace that. It'll be a, shouldn't be too awful bad. There's a, you can get them online, you get them off of Amazon. And there's only a couple of nuts that we have to, look at that, the oven finished breaking. So I am going to replace that. Okay, this new carburetor has arrived. It looks similar to what is on the snow thrower, uh, but we need to take that off of there so that we can take a look to make sure that it is specced up pretty close to being the same. Okay, to remove the carb, we're gonna have to remove the primer hose that I had put on along with the fuel line. And then we'll need to take off the bracket that holds the, the choke together, the throttle linkage, and then there are the two mounting nuts here in the back that we will have to remove as well. All right, now that we've got the carburetor removed, um, as I showed you previously, uh, the the bowl was awful dirty. There's plenty of corrosion on that valve there. It's, uh, it's looking pretty rough. I'll still clean this up. I'll get a new O-ring for it and hold on to it. I uh, may even post it for sale uh, because with the Tecumseh engines, they don't make them anymore and it would be an original part and all it really needs to do is just be cleaned up. Now if we compare it to the knockoff, that I had purchased online. Um, looks pretty looks pretty good. It has the same setup. You know, everything looks pretty similar. I would have preferred not to get the knockoff, but uh, there is a massive difference. This was about 15 bucks. And here in St. Louis, we don't get a whole lot of snow, so spending too much money on something that may not get a whole lot of usage really wasn't uh, worth it and it wasn't in the cards. Okay, let's go ahead and get the new one put on and go from there. All right, so first let's go ahead and get rid of the old gasket. The new carburetor did come with a, a new gasket. So put that on and then let's go ahead and put our new carburetor on. And now we're ready to put the heater box back onto the engine. So as I said earlier, my shutoff valve on this snow thrower is um, stripped out. You can feel it whenever you rotate it. It doesn't, it doesn't lock anything. So I'm going to be replacing it with this guy. And I know that it's best to use metal because the metal is what is um, not going to break when it gets too cold. But again, here in St. Louis, we don't get typically too awful cold uh, so I think I will be able to get away with the the plastic shutoff valve we'll see if it breaks I'll go ahead and purchase the metal one here uh, the difference is about two dollars versus uh, close to 15 or 20 dollars if you get them off of Amazon uh, so we're gonna go ahead and use the plastic one
You can see where I needed to grind out all of the old carriage bolts and, and lock nuts, but that's all right because the new scraper bar came with um, all the carriage bolts and lock nuts that I needed. This was the scraper bar that came off of there, and you can see it's in pretty rough shape. But when you compare it to the new one, you can see how much has been used up over it. So I would be willing to bet that was the original um, scraper bar. So we're going to now put the new scraper bar on. I was able to get the scraper bar and the skids as a combo for 30 bucks off of Amazon. So it's well worth going to Amazon to uh, find these parts. Now, the uh, carriage bolts are a little longer than the old ones, but that's okay. These were one inch in length. I think the old ones were probably three quarter inch, but that'll be all right. There's uh, no issues with those. Maybe next year I will sand and repaint. We'll see what'll happen with that. Here is one of the skids I took off, and you can see where that whole underside has just been ground down. As I said with that scraper bar, I bet you these are the original parts. This is the new one I got. It came with the scraper bar. There's two of them. Scraper bar, $30, and those carriage bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and get these put on, and then we'll adjust it after I get the wheels put on, and we'll adjust the scraper bar height. Unfortunately for these uh, side of the where the skid plate is, the nut... The carriage bolt broke as I was trying to get the nut off, so I went to the local hardware store, got a new carriage bolt, uh, lock washer, and a nut that will go with it. So we'll just assemble the skid. And now with that being loose, I will go do the other side and we will adjust it after we get the wheels put on. So now I want to go ahead and clean that axle up a little bit. It doesn't have to be all that great, just enough to where we can slide the wheel on and off if we need to. Just knocking down the rust really is all we're doing. So we'll put a little bit of put a little bit of lithium grease on there, and then put the tire on. And now we'll do the other side. Okay, here we are with the machine sitting on the concrete. You can see the scraper bar, and it's making contact now with the concrete. We want to put a space in there. What I use is just a carpenter's pencil. You can get these at any hardware store. Uh, some people recommend using paint stirring sticks, whatever. The main thing is just to produce a gap underneath there so that the scraper bar doesn't ride directly on the surface itself. This is especially important if you have like gravel driveways. So now all we need to do is tighten up our bolts and this side would be set. And now we'll do the other side. So now I want to change out the transmission oil here and I'm going to use a 3 8 inch socket to loosen up that bolt. And then what we're going to do is just tilt the machine forward so that we can let that drain and catch that in that bolt.
you can see that oil is pretty dirty and the manufacturer's the owner's manual says that there should be three ounces of oil in there if I was a betting man I'd say that wasn't three ounces so you definitely need some oil so we're gonna wipe that front end up and put some oil in it Now I've read online where some say that if you put until it starts to come out of that cap, and I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I'm going to eyeball my three ounces and it looks like that might be right. I'm going to put a little bit more in there to see if I see something start to dribble out of there. And yeah, you can see where it's just starting to come out. And when you eyeball up the bottle, don't know if you can see this, but here's the 28 ounce mark. Here's the 30 ounce mark, and this is a 32 ounce bottle. So it looks like it got about three ounces in there, and that's what it takes to start to where it just starts to come out of that hole. So now we'll plug it up. And we're done with that part. So I've noticed that the chute is a little hard to move forward and backwards. So I'm gonna to try to use a little silicon lubricant in there to see if we can't loosen that up some. We'll do both sides. Yeah, let's work that in there. seems to be working pretty well. We'll clean up the parts that it spilled. We'll go from there. According to the owner's manual, the oil that's required in here is 21 ounces of 5W30. So we're going to go ahead and add that now. Let's get some gas in there to see if we can get this to fire up now. I'm not going to put a whole lot in there because I want to make sure that I don't have leaks. And if I have leaks, I don't have it leaking all over the place. So we'll put a little bit of gas in there. So now I want to begin to inspect it for leaks. I don't see any underneath the gas tank going into the cutoff. But now let's open up the cutoff. Still don't see any leaks. If we come over to the carburetor side. Don't see any leaks. Let's go ahead and prime it. You can hear the bulb filling. Still no leaks, which is good. I don't see any underneath here. So let's go ahead and start her up.
All right, we got it going. Uh, it cost 75 bucks for the snow thrower itself. Another $30 for the skid plate and scraper bar combo. And then throwing in the extra little bits with the carburetor, that was probably about another 25 bucks with that and the hoses and a little bit from the hardware store. So, you know, we're looking at $125. Yeah, it's a 1980s model, but 125 bucks. If I get a couple of seasons out of it, hey, great. I could do my drive, my sidewalk. I could do a couple of the neighbors. I got a, an older gentleman next door. Not to mention my parents are getting up there in age and they live relatively close. I can take care of their drive. And um, so I hope to use it, really. And so when the next snowfall hits and it's time to use it, stay tuned for that video. If you would, please give me a like, a subscribe, uh, leave a comment. Would you have wasted your time? I mean, like I said, 75 bucks off Facebook Marketplace. Can't beat it. Until next time, take care.